I run the script, do an auto background extraction, select my drizzle amount, and oh, I can do SVCC right here, and alrighty then, it's done and already color calibrated. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you my serial scripts for doing mosaics in both broadband and narrowband using CSTAR data. And today I go a little bit further and show you the Python script that I've been working on that gives you a lot more control and flexibility over your data, as well as work around some of the beta serial bugs that people have been dealing with, where you can just stack your smart telescope data with just a click of a few buttons. And I said smart telescopes and not just specifically C-star data because this will also work with your Dwarf 3 data as well as Celestron Origin. Although I haven't played with Celestron Origin data for this script, I'm fairly confident that the settings that I have will work with it. And before I go any further, I want to shout out and give a huge thanks to Rich from Deep Space Astro. He has helped tremendously with testing as well as great feedback for how this script has turned out. And I also want to thank about eight people on my Discord server who has joined the closed beta group and they also tested the script for the last couple of weeks and gave me really great feedback as well as bug reports that helped me make the script what it is today. I will have future versions of the script so if you want to join the closed beta group, join the Discord server, the invite link is in the description below and let me know that you want to join and I'll give you that role. So let's get to the demo. So I've serial started and I am on version 1.4.0 beta 2, which is currently the latest as of this recording. To get the Python script loaded here, the first thing you want to do is you want to get to my GitHub, link in the description below. It's also at nastronaut slash serial dash scripts. And it's going to be this Python file, Nastronomy Smart Telescope PP for preprocessor.py. This is this file. And you want to do is click on this button here on the right hand side. It says download raw file. Once you download it, put it somewhere that Cyril can see it. So if you don't already know it, you go to the hamburger menu, you click on preferences, or you click on get scripts, and it's under the script section, and it's going to be one of these directories. Yours may be different, you may have additional directories here. Just put it somewhere that Cyril can see it, and then click apply. Since this is still not a part of Cyril's script repository, it's not going to appear here, but maybe one day it will. And for myself, I put it in my serial scripts pre-processing section here since we are doing mostly pre-processing with the script and this is the only python script here i'm sh sure others may appear here if i check them off but once it's here in my serial in scripts under python scripts it should show up here so before you run the script we want to make sure that serial is set up to run this script as we need it so first thing to make sure is that your home directory oops your home directory needs to be set correctly so mine is serial 14c star mosaic and we want to make sure that this, whatever this directory is, has a lights directory here. And if I open that in my Explorer, this is it, right? So I'm, I put my old test results here, but it needs a lights directory with all of your lights. If you have multiple sessions, just put them all in one directory and it'll work as expected. If you're not in the lights directory, so say for example, you're in the lights directory here, if you look at the home directory and you try to run the script, it will warn you saying lights directory does not exist, please change current working directory. So you wanna make sure that your working directory is set correctly. And at the moment, you wanna make sure that you only have fits files there. And once that's set correctly, click on scripts, Python scripts, and then click on Nastronomy Smart Telescope PP.py. Click one script if you get the warning. And you'll get this little pop-up here. This is a really old looking UI, and that's because I did zero work on the UI. It's one of my to-do lists to try and get it to modern serial standards, uh, probably in the next version. But for now, I, I mostly focus on functionality instead of just look. And the UI here is pretty self-explanatory, but let's quickly go over it. So this does confirm what your current working directory is. So you wanna make sure that this is correct. Um, under the telescopes, you have a few choices, S30 and S50. They'll mostly give you the exact same results. And then we have Dwarf 3 and Celestron Origin. And based on what you click here, the you know the bear pattern and how SPCC works will be different. So we'll just start with S30 for now. Then I have the checkbox here that says 2048 file. There's a little bit of a tool tip, but it basically tells you that if you're on a Windows machine, if you have more than 2048 files, serial is not gonna run because of some underlying limits with the operating system. If you are on a Mac or Linux, clicking this box on and off is not gonna do anything. On Mac and Linux, it's just ignored. But on Windows, if you have more than 2048 files, you click on enable and this will turn your sequence into a fit sequence. 
and there are some limitations that comes with that I will uh, discuss uh, later on. But for now, if you have more than 2048 files, click this and it'll let you do some stuff. And the thing to know is that if you use this method, mosaics will not work because plate solving this will not save any of the WCS information in the file. So we can't use the max framing method that we would need for a mosaic to work. So the registration gets wonky and max framing doesn't work. It just looks weird and you could even receive errors. So this is only for normal modes and not mosaic modes for now. Going down to the optional pre-processing steps, you don't have to select any of these. These are all optional, but we do have background extraction if you want to do some background extraction on each of the frames. So this will do it on the entire sequence, not just the final product. And this is not using Graxpert. This is just using the generic serial background extraction polynomial with scale of one that's listed. I, although I do have code for Graxpert, I'm not using it here because it takes a very long time to do uh, background extraction on an entire sequence. So. I have decided not to do that. Next thing under registration, we have one checkbox, which is to drizzle. So now that Cyril has true drizzle, you can apply it here. You can go all the way up to drizzle of 3x, but just to note that as soon as you click on drizzle, your processing time will go up just because of how this works. And the higher the drizzle amount, the longer it'll take. I'll usually leave it at one. And as for pixel fraction, this is how the size of the pixels will be. Uh, the, by default, it's one. Cyril recommends doing an inverse of the drizzle amount. So if you do a 2x drizzle here, it would be 0.5 pixel fraction here. Uh, I don't normally follow that rule. I've been doing normally when I do it in pixel inside is 1x drizzle and then pixel fraction is 0.9 and I've gotten really good results here. But for the demo purposes, I'm just keeping it all at default. It'll be super fast. The next option we have is feather. So this is for mosaics. If you see that frames that are overlapping have artifacts at the edges like where they're overlapping, you can use the feather method and it will smooth those out. So you'll notice that if I click on the 2048 option, the feather actually gets checked off or actually becomes disabled. So this doesn't get used if you're using 2048 because we are not allowed to use mosaics for 2048 uh, mode at this moment. And you don't really need feather all the time, just if you need it. And finally, uh, this extra step here is post stacking. So you can actually do spectrophotometric color calibration right from the right from this script here. So you can click on enable photometric color calibration, and you can click on your OSC filter. Uh, S30 and S50 both have the same filters, which is no filter, or this is the UV IR cut filter, broadband, and LP, which is light pollution filter, or the narrowband filter. If you select for example, Dwarf 3, the filters change. So we have the Astro filter, which is the EVIR card filter on the Dwarf 3, and the dual band filter, which is the HA and Oxygen 3 hydrogen beta filter. Dwarf 3 also has a third filter called the Visible filter, which is normally meant for daytime photography. I didn't include that on purpose because that's like a narrower version of the EVIR card filter. I don't think I don't think we need that anyway for for processing here, but let me know if you think differently. The next thing we have is the catalog. So this will check to see if you have local Gaia available. I would highly recommend using local Gaia. It would it will speed up how all of this works because we do need to do plate solve on the entire sequence and it'll be just super fast. So it will default to local Gaia. So you want to make sure you have that installed. If you don't, you know, it's basically just go to scripts, Python scripts, serial catalog installer, and just make sure you install uh, the SVCC catalog here. You may want to do astrometry here as well. Rich from Deep Space Astro has a really good video explaining what all these buttons do, so I'll link to that in the description below. And that's pretty much all there is to this. So I am going to run this on my M31 data. I'm going to switch this back to S30 because that's what I used for this. And then, oh, actually, before I do that, I'll show you Celestron Origin. You know, I have the broadband data. Uh, I think this is also using UVIR cut. I don't have access to Celestron Origin data at the moment, so this is mostly just going off of what I found online. And then the Origin Nebula filter is also based on what I found online. I believe this is a filter that you need to buy. All right, going back to S30, broadband, I'll do SBCC. And then I'll click on Run. And then we'll see it going through the motions. While this is running, if this video or script has been helpful for you so far, 
consider liking the video, uh, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and if you want to support me further, consider becoming a member of this channel on YouTube or on Patreon. All right, let's get back to processing. All right, that actually completed really fast. It also did SBCC, but you can see that it looks really, really good. It does do an auto stretch, so you probably don't want to use this version here. But if we look at our folder here, the CSR Mosaics folder, we have two different files here. We have the OG, so this is pre SBCC, and then we have the SBCC file. Looking at the naming of the folder here, or the file here, we have the item, the object, we have how many frames were stacked what the exposure frame, exposure time was per frame, and the capture date. And then I also put in the timestamp of when this was processed so that you can have multiple runs. So I can keep running this over and over again. It'll keep adding on. Uh, I know that if we run this again in the process folder, there is a result.fit all the way at the bottom here. Since it's just result.fit, it'll keep getting overwritten, and I wanted to have like a history. So this is why I do this. So if you want to do some more processing here, instead of using this one, you don't, you probably want to do more editing in the linear version of this image anyway. So you go to open and then you click on the SVCC and open that. So you can see that this is not stretched. You can auto stretch on the screen um, and you can crop and then do the rest of your processing here, including like Graxpert background extraction and whatever else you need to do here. But for the purposes of the script, it is done, and it, it did a really nice job in just a few minutes. Uh, the stack, 245 frames out of 248 frames. And so three frames were left out, and I can, I'll talk about why that happens sometimes and how I'm working around that shortly. So I switched my working directory to... Uh, it says these are normal. So this was not in a mosaic mode. This is just a normal mode. Just to show you that it works in normal mode as well. This is pretty much the same data that I tested in the the other uh, serial scripts here, the Rod Bannon's, the mosaic SSF files here. So I'll just do this. That has a lot more files. I'm not going to 2048. Oh, by the way, you can do 2048 plus file mode even if you don't have 2048 files, and it'll use a fit sequence instead. Uh, you can, I don't know why you would, but you can. Just just letting you know. So I'll drizzle. And then I'll do spectra format color calibration. This one has a narrow band filter, and I'll actually do, a, let's say 1.5x drizzle. And I'll click on run. So I just did another quick stack of a narrow band object here. You can see this is from multiple nights and it, it wasn't a mosaic, but it kind of looked like a mosaic just because of how the frames are stacked. But you can see that it looks really nice. And this is just out of stacking, didn't do anything special. And I can open the SPCC file. Oops, not that. I can do this. Open the SPCC file. And then I can auto stretch this and then work on this if I wanted to make any kind of changes. It looks pretty cool. I hope that was a good demo and I hope it made you want to try it out. Now let's talk a little bit about the troubleshooting that you may need to do. One thing I've read is that if you upgrade your version of Serial from like beta 1 to beta 2, you may have issues running Python scripts. And if that happens, the number one suggestion I've seen that works is to just go into your scripts library and reset VENV, which is the virtual environment setup for Python. And that seems to take care of about 99% of cases. The other 1% of cases is something that I dealt with. So when I went to beta 2, Python just wouldn't work. So I reset reset virtual environment and I expected it to work but it wasn't working, it wasn't reinstalling the scripts. And I realized it's because my VNV directory was kind of frozen. So I had to go in manually in my explorer and delete the folder directly and then reset VNV and that seems to have done the trick. So that should be a good first troubleshooting step. So the next thing is something that I've actually fixed but I thought I'd mention it anyway, especially if you're running one of the SSF scripts or either that I wrote or somebody else wrote that you may run into this, which is if you're drizzling, Cyril may sometimes turn some of your register frames completely black. And when that happens, stacking will fail because normalization will fail because it can't, it can't normalize a fully black frame. So when you run Cyril and you try to stack it, it'll fail and it'll, it'll tell you the first black frame that it ran into. You can go in manually, you can unselect it or you can delete it and then run it again. But if you have like 2000 frames and out of 2000, maybe 10 were turned black, you'll have to run that script 10 times in order to get them one by one because Cyril won't report that to you. And it's a bug that the Cyril devs are aware of. I don't know if there's a fix in the pipeline. And the way I worked around it in this script is, after registration, uh, the code that I wrote will actually go in and scan all the registered images, and it'll scan to see if they are black. 
if they're black, it'll go and automatically deselect each of those from the frames list. So you don't have to do anything. So whether you have one black frame or a hundred black frames, hopefully it's not a hundred, it'll unselect all of them and stacking will succeed. It does add a qu quite a bit of time to the processing, especially if you're drizzling like 2x or 3x. 3x takes a long time. But I figured that it's better to wait than for the stacking for the entire process to fail and you have to restart again anyway. So the script that I have works pretty nicely. It is able to detect all black frames in both 16-bit and 32-bit mode in Cyril. And again, huge thanks to Rich for helping me troubleshoot that because he and I were getting different results and he was very patient and I sent him like, hey, copy and paste this code. What do you get? Copy and paste this, what do you get? Like a hundred times. And he was very patient and he did all of that. And that helped quite a lot with that block of code. So, and hopefully you don't have to deal with any black frames, but if you do, let me know because systems are different and I would very much like to know about it. The third issue comes with the 2048 mode and drizzle. So sometimes I found that if you use the 2048 mode, this is only on Windows by the way, not Mac and Linux. If you use that mode and you drizzle, it'll spit out a monochrome image. So when you have a monochrome image, it's fine unless you also click SPCC. So it can't do a spectrophotometric color calibration because there is no color. So it'll fail there. So if you're using 2048 mode, you should either drizzle or SPCC. Don't do both of them at the same time. My recommendation would be to just drizzle. And then once it saves a monochrome image, you can open it back up and debayer it yourself and run SPCC. Now to talk a little bit about the future work that I wanna do with this script. I think the next thing that I'll probably tackle is to change the UI so that it matches more of the Cyril's aesthetic. They also have a guide on how to bring it up to their standards. I didn't focus on the UI at all. I just focused on the functionality over the last couple of weeks. I just wanted to get something out that works. And once I get the UI done, I should be able to submit this to the Cyril repository, the scripts repository, so that next time you load Cyril, it loads the script automatically for you. You don't have to go to my GitHub and get it manually. Second improvement that's on my list is that I know that some of these scopes will let you take calibration frames, like the Dwarf 3 lets you take dark frames, and now the C stars let you take flat frames, and you can take the other calibration frames, you know, in clever ways as well. My idea is to allow you to add calibration frames, and I think that once you do that, we'll be able to expand the script to more than smart telescopes. So that's on my pipeline as well. And the third thing I want to tackle is the 2048 mode. It's unfortunate that we need to do a fit sequence you know, on Windows when we don't have to do it on Mac and Linux. I want to think about how I can batch it and how I can batch those files so you can do 10,000 frames without having to do 2048 mode. And if you have any suggestions or improvement requests, let me know. If you know how to use GitHub, there is a template you can use to submit bugs and enhancement requests through GitHub. You can also reach out to me in the comments below or on Discord or pretty much any other social media that I'm a part of. And if you use the script, I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to get your feedback and know what your experience was like. If you want to support this channel, consider subscribing if you haven't already, like the video, and consider joining this channel as a member. Until next time, clear skies.